Okay, so it's our great pleasure to have Professor Damson here from the University of Chicago, unfortunately only on Zoom, not in person. Um, he's going to tell us about a new approach to writing down an effective field theory of Fermi liquids. So, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, first, I would like to uh, thank uh, Chaitanya and others for inviting me to give this uh, uh, colloquium at the uh, um, um, SITP. Um, I wish I could uh, be there um, in person to give this talk, but I hope that uh, this talk is going to be understandable as if it is um, as a, at least um, I, I, I can write on my uh, transparencies. And if you have any question during this talk, please, please interrupt me at any time. I'm going to tell you about a new paper that recently I have written we have written uh, here at my collaborator, uh, Luca de la Cretas, um, whom many of you uh, have known. Uh, he was at Stanford. Um, my student, Ishien Du and Umang Meta. And we have posted this paper in March this year. Uh, and we are still um, collecting uh, comments in particular on what we can do with this formalism. The plan of my talk is as follows. First, I will uh, review Landau's Fermi liquid theory. And then um, um, emphasize that this theory can be thought of as a theory describing the dynamics of shapes, namely the shapes of the Fermi surfaces, uh, uh, which make the problem not rather non trivial, uh, but we will then describe a mathematical approach that allows us to. Uh, to, uh, to, to tackle this problem and reformulate Landau's Fermi liquid theory as a uh, field theory. This method is known in mathematics as the method of co-adjoined orbit. Mathematicians are interested in this method um, completely uh, for other purposes. Uh, in this um, um, problem, we will uh, be dealing with the group of canonical transformations, which I will also review, and what are the co-adjoint orbits of this group. Uh, so to start, uh, let's uh, go back in history. Uh, the start, the begin of solid state physics, presumably is um, theory of metals, first formulated by Zomerfeld in 1928, uh, and then culminated uh, by the review that Sommerfeld and Bette wrote in 1933. Um, according to this theory, electrons in metals, we have like free, free, free fermions. And from this picture of free fermions, one can derive various uh, properties of, um, of, of, of uh, metals. Uh, one example is the wiedemann franz law. Uh, that comes out from solving the Boltzmann equations for free uh, degenerate fermions in the limit of a small temperature. So this theory is very successful, but then there is a puzzle. If one estimates the magnitude of the potential energy and the kinetic energy of the electrons in, 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 in a typical metal, one sees that uh, they are of the same order of magnitude. In fact, the potential energy is slightly larger than the kinetic energy in many cases. And then the question arises, how can electrons behave like free particles if they are um, interacting with each other uh, so strongly? The answer to this question was provided in 1957 by Landau in his paper uh, called the Landau the uh, theory, the, the theory of Fermi liquids. So in this paper, Landau uh, gave us uh, an explanation of the uh, fact that fermions behave freely in a way that we still now, um, it, it is the paradigm that we still use to uh, think about the, um, the, uh, the electrons in metal. Basically, Landau noticed that what is important is not the interactions, between the strength of the interaction between the, the fermions or the ratio between the kinetic and potential energy, what uh, give us a small parameter in the theory of the Fermi liquid is the smallness of the temperature. Namely, he, um, he argued that if we have a situation 
in which the only degrees of freedoms are those near a Fermi surface. So here I'm drawing a Fermi surface of a fermionic system in momentum space. If the temperature is low, then only the degrees of freedom near the Fermi surface are excited by, by using uh, arguments based on the uh, phase space available for a quasi-particle near the Fermi surface to decay. Uh, Landau managed, have managed to show that the, uh, the width of this uh, um, particle, quasi-particle, is small compared to its energy. So this argument by Landau is now the foundation for our understanding of a uh, fermionic system. Uh, Landau's formula quick theory can be applied to many systems. Some of these are listed here. Helium-3 is one of the examples of a system where um, atoms, uh, fermionic helium-3 atoms interact very strongly with each other, but at low, temp low enough temperature, uh, helium-3 behaves like a Fermi liquid. Electrons in metal also behaves like uh, Landa what Landau predicts in his uh, theory. And presumably neutrons and neutron stars also behaves at, uh, in a certain range of temperature as, um, as, as quasi particle in, in Fermi liquids. And there are other examples. Landau's Fermi liquid theory is sometimes described in a uh, in, in a simple way as a free theory of uh, uh, Landau's quasi-particle. It's a theory of free quasi-particles. As we will see um, by, uh, uh, by uh, describing Landau's Fermi liquid theory as a free theory, um, we, um, uh, we, we sweep under the rug a very non-trivial structure of kinematic structure of the theory that makes it very different from usual free field theory that um, we learn in course, the courses of, um, of quantum field theory, like uh, free scalar field theory or Dirac uh, fermion, free Dirac fermions. The structure of Landau Fermi liquid theory is very non-trivial and it's best to first review the theory in the same form as Landau described it. So in Landau's description, which one can see, we can read in standard um, uh, textbook. Uh, um, most of them are in Russian or translated from Russian. For example, Abrikosov, Korkov, Zelashinsky, or, or, or Lipschitz, Pitayevsky. Um, the um, starting point of Landau Fermi liquid theory is a phase space distribution function, a function f which is a function of the momentum and coordinates. And we write uh, the Liouville equation. So for free fermion, let's, let's start first from the simple, simpler case of free fermions. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the behavior of a system of free fermions in an external electromagnetic field is described by the Liouville equation is, that describes the evolution of the distribution function over time. And moreover, um, if the initial condition for this equation is such uh, that um, uh, the distribution function is, has a form of a, of, a, of, a, of a degenerate fermionic system, that is if the distribution function is zero outside some Fermi uh, surface, so F here is equal to zero, uh, and equal to one inside some Fermi surface, then this, this uh, situation will be preserved under uh, the Liouville evolution. That's because the Liouville equation preserves um, space, phase space volume. So if F is equal to one in one place, then it remains one it's, if we adapted that volume uh, by the Liouville uh, evolution. That means that the equations, the Liouville equation can be thought of as an equation describing the behavior of the shape of the Fermi surface. So let me draw it here, the picture. We can think about our um, system as a system of fermion 
whose distribution function uh, fills a certain region in momentum space. And the, uh, the main, main thing here is that its region has a very sharp edge, which separate the F equal to one area from the F equal to zero area. Okay, so during, so you imagine, we imagine that for each X coordinate, we have a certain shape of the Fermi surface. And using the, um, the, the, the Liouville's equation, we can follow the evolution of this shape as it evolved under time evolution. So at a, um, at a different time, so th suppose this is t equal to zero. At some different t, we will have a different uh, Fermi surface like this. But we can find out the shape of that Fermi surface by, uh, by evolving the system on using the Liouville's equation. The Liouville equation is an equation describing the a dyna a, a dynamics of shapes. So this equation can also tell us um, how to compute the correlation functions. So for example, if we need to compute the density-density correlation function, we would turn on an uh, electric field, so here E, here, and then solve the linearized equation in the external electric field, and then read out the linear response uh, from the uh, linear dependence of the fluctuation of the change of the density as uh, compared to the uh, scalar potential. So doing this calculation, we find the, uh, the, 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 um, the um, formula for the linear response function. A nonlinear response can also be obtained uh, by solving this equation, not in the linear approximation, but to higher order in the uh, electric field. The regime of validity of this calculation is that um, the frequency, at least the wavelength, has to be smaller than the uh, Fermi wavelength of the, uh, uh, of the uh, quasi particle near the Fermi surface. This calculation um, gives us uh, the same result as one would, uh, uh, one would get by using uh, standard. Feynman diagram technique and compute the uh, fermion loop. Uh, this um, expression coincides with the expression of, obtained from computing the Feynman diagram in the regime of small omega and small q. Now let's return to uh, Landau's theory. Landau's uh, Fermi liquid theory is an upgrade on the uh, Liouville's description of free fermions. Um, it's modified the theory of per free fermions by introducing the so-called Landau uh, parameters, uh, which can be thought of as a set of functions, uh, F, which is a function of P and P prime, uh, that describe how the energy of a quasi-particle with momentum P at point X depends on the perturbations of the distribution function at other momenta. So here I make, I have to put prime here. Yeah. So a uh, change in the distribution function at momentum P prime can influence the energy of the quasar particle at momentum X. In Landau's theory, this uh, Landau's parameter is the only new parameter that one need to know to describe the, um, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the Fermi liquid. So Fermi liquid differs from fer uh, free Fermi gas by these Landau parameter. So then we can, uh, what Landau uh, uh, told us is to write down the kinetic equations, taking into account the modification of the energy of the quasi particles. The kinetic equation has a standard form like this. And it is, since it is still a kinetic equation con which conserves phase space volume, it is also an equation that describes the dynamic of shapes of a, the Fermi surface. You can still uh, think about this equation as the equation describing the time evolution of a sharp Fermi surface as it uh, evolved in 
for space in time. So now, as we have learned this um, uh, Landau Fermi liquid theory, one uh, glaring thing that uh, one can notice right away is that this Landau Fermi liquid theory is not a field theory. It is formulated as an equation of motion, the uh, equation, uh, the Landau uh, kinetic equation. It's not some uh, theory where we, we write down an, um, an effective action and then uh, try to use a large toolbox of effective field theory. Uh, it is not a theory where we can get insight from, uh, from the Wilsonian uh, viewpoint on uh, effective field theory. We would not be able to, for example, classify um, the Landau Fermi liquid as a fixed point and talk about uh, all the dimension of operators at this fixed point, for example. A uh, field theory formulation of uh, Landau Fermi liquid theory might be useful um, uh, in, 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 uh, in, uh, in many ways. So one way is to reconcile the high energy viewpoint on the problem with the standard condensed matter viewpoint. Another more practical point of view, um, practical application of a field theory formulation of Landau Fermi liquid theory uh, might be um, uh, found in the problem of non-Fermi liquid. Non-Fermi liquid um, is a fuzzy notion, uh, but there is one, at least one possible example of a situation in which we know non-Fermi liquid um, uh, must exist. That is a problem of a two plus one dimensional fermions at finite density coupled to a U1 gauge field. And this problem can be realized in, uh, in fractional quantum hole physics. Namely, if we have uh, a half field Landau level, um, at, um, uh, we put electrons on the lowest Landau levels at half filling and turn on interaction between the electrons. If these interactions is short range, then the physics is believed to be described by a, 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 a two plus one dimensional theory of composite fermion coupled to a gauge field. And the non-Fermi liquid theory might, uh, non-Fermi liquid might appear in other contexts as well. So um, let me briefly talk about some previous attempt to formulate Fermi liquid theory as an effective field theory. One um, direct, um, uh, attack to the problem was made by um, various authors, including Puczynski and Shankar in the early 1990s, where they tried to, um, tried to imagine a, situ a, a, a procedure in which we would follow Wilson and integrate out all the degrees of freedom, fermionic degrees of freedom outside the Fermi surface, far away from the Fermi surface, and concentrate the attention on the degrees of freedom, fermionic degree, degrees of freedom near the Fermi surface. And write down some Lagrangian similar to these uh, formulas that I copied from paper by uh, a lecture by, by Polchinski. So one thing that makes this um, approach pretty difficult to use is that in contrast to the usual effective field theory, the regime of small energy does not correspond to small momentum. We still have to deal here with a situation in which particle, quasi-particle have finite momentum near the uh, Fermi surface and low energy. And sometimes this problem um, is, uh, people try to uh, um, overcome this problem by dividing fermionic, fermion, the theory, the Fermi surface, uh, two patches, and within each of the patches, one can try to change the momentum so that the momentum is small within each of the patches. Um, some um, insight on the behavior of Fermi liquid and VCS coupling can be obtained in this method, but one of the things that comes out very unnatural in this uh, method is that there is there are 
uh, cancellation between different diagrams that are not obvious in this uh, in this uh, way of doing things. We will mention. I will mention this cancellation a little bit later. Another set of attempts to uh, attack this problem is um, is um, sim uh, is uh, inspired by bosonization in one plus one dimension. So in one plus one dimension, we can freely move from the fermionic language to the bosonic language uh, using a procedure called bosonization or fermionization. Uh, um, in this approach, uh, a system of fermion, for example, is described by uh, uh, bosons and the derivative of this bosonic field is correspond to currents in the fermionic theory. Now, generalizing this procedure that is quite natural in one plus one dimension to higher dimension turn out to be a difficult uh, problem. And that's because the Fermi, it's the same problem uh, due to the uh, presence of a extended Fermi surface. So here, uh, if one do, uh, try to uh, one try to do uh, bosonization, we have to introduce one boson at each point on the Fermi surface. So for example, in two dimension, we would have a bosonic field that depends on the angle theta. And it's turned out that it's not very clear how, what are the rules uh, one have to use in order to write down the theory of these uh, bosons. And if one turn on an um, uh, um, uh, uh, um, uh, electromagnetic field, um, this um, boson from one point in the Fermi surface would move to another point due to the Lorentz force, for example. And then there is a mixing between modes of different uh, theta. There is, there is a very interesting attempt to uh, relate uh, this um, mixing of modes with different theta, uh, trying to connect that with anomalies. That attempt was made recently by uh, uh, Dominic Els, uh, Rian Thorgan, and, and Santil. Uh, if there is time, I'm going to mention uh, the connection between our approach to the approach of, uh, of this author. So let me try to formulate the, uh, the problem, a very uh, well defined um, minimal problem that we would like to solved in this talk. And the question is the following. Can we formulate, can we reformulate Landau Fermi liquid theory as a field theory with some action as is a function of some fields or set of field phi so that by varying the action with respect to phi, the equation of motion, variational equation of motion coincide with Landau's kinetic equation. This is basically a uh, an, a question of classical field theory. We haven't even uh, talked about the quantum theory yet. The answer to this question, I will argue, is yes. And the natural method to use is the method of co-adjoint orbit that mathematicians have been using to, uh, uh, to try to develop uh, representations of certain groups. So uh, next few transparencies will be mathematics uh, of uh, co-adjoint orbit. Um, so let's consider a general Lie group that we call here uh, uh, G, capital G. The corresponding algebra is a calligraphic small g. And for any elements of the algebra, we know that we can exponentiate it and get an element of the group. We also know that uh, for any Lie group, there is a special representation of the algebra and the group is, that is called the adjoint representation. So the adjoint representation is um, uh, is general uh, is um, realized on the Lie algebra, uh, so that each um, element of the Lie algebra is put into a linear uh, operator, which is just the commutator of the uh, given element of the D algebra with this uh, element G. And by exponentiating this um, representation, the adjoint representation for, for the algebra, we get the adjoint representation 
for the uh, group. So in the more familiar notation um, for a unitary group, for example, the repre unitary representation transform uh, 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 um, uh, element of the algebra f into u, f u minus one. Sometimes uh, we can, we can, it's useful to think about that uh, notation. Uh, let me define now uh, something a little bit less um, familiar, the co-adjoint representation. For that, we are going to define the dual space, G star, a space dual to the Lie algebra. Uh, a dual space is defined uh, so that for any elements of the dual space and the uh, elements of our Lie algebra of small f, is the element of the dual space, we can define the scalar product between f, small f, and large f, and capital F. And this scalar product has a usual linear uh, property. And the co-adjoint representation is defined so that the scalar product is invariant when we try to rotate both f and small f by acting on it. Um, uh, representation, corresponding representation of the Lie group. So that's how the co-adjoint representation can be applied. Let's go uh, through one simple example. So uh, 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 an example here is the SU2 group. So uh, SU2 algebra is the algebra of, of all the um, linear uh, combination of the Pauli matrices. And um, so the algebra is a three-dimensional algebra. And the dual space is then also a three-dimensional dual space of three vector F1, F2, F3. And the, uh, the scalar product is just a scalar product between scale F and, and big F. So here, the uh, co-adjoint action of the group on small F is re really just a SO3 rotation of this. Okay, so let's um, let's uh, define one more a little bit um, uh, 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 this 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 uh, transparency is a little bit mathematical, but the the notion is very simple. Uh, the notion of the co-adjoint orbit. So, sorry, could uh, could you just show one more time the definition of the co-adjoint uh, equation? Yeah. Uh, on the two slides ago. Okay. So here, yeah, the co-adjoint representation is the following. So we have a, we have a, 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 a vector. So f can be thought of as a vector in, in G. And this, uh, this small f is another vector, but in, in the, in the uh, G star. And we define the co-adjoint representation so that if we rotate this f by u, we rotate this small f by uh, action of co-adjoint representation, so if tilde, uh, so that the scalar product is preserved. That's okay. The, so. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and we can prove that this uh, is this really uh, uh, co-adjoint. We can we can construct a co-adjoint representation as well. The co-adjoint orbit is a very important um, notion. Here, yeah, if we the, the notion is the following, we, we start with a, some 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 vector f zero uh, in the dual space, and then we we act on that all possible um, uh, elements of the group. And then this g is going to uh, transform into and and form a certain uh, trajectory that's the uh, changing the uh, acting on it. With all possible u, we get a subspace of the dual space that is called the co-adjoint orbit. Okay. So we act on this f of u and we move it to here. And that the set of all these points is called the co-adjoint orbit. And the co-adjoint orbit can be thought of as a coset. It's a coset of the group, total group G and the group H. Uh, that is the group that keep F0 invariant. So it's really a, a left coset. Okay. 
So in the in 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 our this uh, SU uh, SU two example, this uh, covalent orbit is a sphere. If we start from a, a vector, say f zero, imagine that this vector is non-zero. Uh, then the covalent orbit is just a sphere, uh, S two sphere, which is a coset of S O three or S U two divided by S O two. But uh, uh, the covalent orbit. In this SU two case. Okay, but in our case, we are going to deal with a, a different group, not SU two, but the group of canonical transformation. The Fermi liquid is going to be identified with the covalent orbit of the group of canonical transformation. So let's first talk about the algebra of canonical transformation, or the um, infinitesimal canonical transformation. So these can, infinitesimal canonical transformation are gener, generated by a function of phase space, x and p. So this is the uh, infinite, infinitesimal canonical transformation. One can think about this as just uh, uh, infinitesimal time evolution under a Hamiltonian which is given by f, x, and p. So here I'm talking about the phase space of a single particle. A coordinate x and p are the momentum p, so coordinate and momentum of a single particle. And we can define the infinitesimal canonical transformation uh, in the phase space of that single particle. So these preserve Poisson brackets. Uh, two um, infinitesimal canonical transformation uh, parameterized by F and G do not commute, but leads to another canonical transformation uh, given by the Poisson bracket of F and G. And so uh, the Poisson bracket is basically a Lie bracket in, the, uh, in this uh, Lie group of uh, canonical transformation. Sorry, yeah. is that supposed to have G on the left hand, on the right hand side of that equation? Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm making a typo here. It should be G. G here. And the Lie group uh, is a group of um, finite canonical transformations that are obtained by exponentiating these infinitesimal canonical transformation. In other words, these are the uh, canonical transformations that um, can be uh, obtained by a finite time Hamiltonian evolution with all possible uh, form of this uh, Hamiltonian. So it's exponents of f is give us the Lie group of canonical transformation. So here is the here, that is the Lie algebra. What is the dual space? The dual space is a space, also a space of all functions of, of, of uh, in phase space, function of x and p, and the scalar product between f, small f, uh, elements of the dual space, and the big f element of the Lie algebra is just the integral of the product of small f and big f in phase space. So that seems to be a lot of mathematics or nothing. But there is a very important um, um, physics behind this mathematics. We are going to interpret uh, F as physical observable. So for example, uh, a function, so this function F, X, P, for example, if we choose this function to be P squared over 2M, that observable is going to be identified with the kinetic energy of our system. And the small f, is identified with a state, characterizes a state. And this scalar product, f, uh, small f with big F, is going to be identified with the average of the observable f in the state, uh, small f. So for example, here, if I write uh, scalar product of f with this p squared over 2m, that's going to be integral of the xdp, p squared over 2m times the xp. So this f is nothing but the distribution function. Um, excuse me, doesn't 
to make it a state, don't you have to restrict f to be positive with integral one? This f is um, the, um, for our later, we are going to limit ourselves. So, so, so this f doesn't have to be the, the integral of df dp over two i to d dx of f is going to be identified with the number of particles. Through that, in kinetic theory, we have to limit ourselves to f that is positive. Uh, we are going to have even a stronger uh, limit, a stronger, com um, stronger um, condition on this f. Uh, uh, on the next, well, uh, on, on, on a few uh, transparency ahead. So let's, let's, let, let me return to your question uh, a little bit later. So the adjoint and co-adjoint action of the group elements on, um, on the, uh, uh, the physical observable F, algebra elements F, and um, the distribution functions small f are given by acting the Poisson bracket on this function and ex basically exponentiating the Poisson bracket. So here it is. These are the formula how the um, adjoint and co-adjoint action of the group elements act on uh, the algebra on the, um, the dual space. Uh, one can check that the scalar product is preserved under this action. So um, we are going to limit ourselves to F that are obtained from the ground state of the system, which is chosen to be a state in which the distribution function is zero inside a certain a, a, a sphere. So, or in two dimension, it would be a, a circle um, with radius PF and F is equal to one inside and F is equal to zero outside. Um, we're going to start with this F zero and act on it uh, all possible canonical transformation and uh, then we get the co a co-adjoint orbit. So a property of this co-adjoint orbit is that they, it contains state with, uh, with sharp Fermi surface. Only state with F either equal to either one or zero uh, are um, obtained, uh, can be obtained from this uh, reference state by a canonical transformation. But we know that the Landau Fermi liquid theory describe evolution in which the Fermi surface remains sharp all the time. And so we can think of the, the co-adjoint orbit as a space of all possible low energy state of a, Fermi, of, a, of a Fermi liquid. So our task is now is to uh, parameterize the co-adjoint orbit and write down the action that would lead to the Landau kinetic equation on this co-adjoint orbit. So, um, so that that's the answer to your question, Tom. Uh, uh, we are limit we limit ourselves to state in which not only f have to be uh, positive, actually f square has to be equal to f. That's our uh, condition. The entropy of this system has to be uh, zero. So um, we can work in um, uh, to parameterize the co-adjoint orbits. Let's try to work in perturbation theory and uh, describe the state in which the Fermi surface deviates a little bit from a circular form. So this state can be obtained from the, uh, so we work in perturbation theory, F is equal F zero plus delta F. So this state can be obtained by acting on F0 uh, elements, U equal exponent of some phi, the phi uh, considered to be small. And then by acting on this F and doing the Poisson uh, bracket, um, triple algebra, we find that the resulting state is a state given also by a, a sharp Fermi surface, but uh, at each point, it's, uh, the Fermi surface has moved, and it has moved by an amount equal to the derivative of this function 
phi along the direction uh, given by, uh, by p vector. So that is the how much the Fermi surface has moved in the radial direction. So one thing is that um, uh, there is an ambiguity in the parameterization of the co joint orbit. We can always multiply uh, element u by uh, from the right by v, uh, where v uh, leaves f0 invariant. Uh, if we do that, then this u v times f0 is the same as u f, f0, roughly speaking. And so that uh, means that uh, there are many function phi that are equivalent to each other. And we can, um, we can use this uh, ambiguity to do a gauge fixing. So one, 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 one uh, choice of gauge is to declare that the function phi, uh, so the function phi, which it was a function of x and p, uh, does not depend on, 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 on the absolute value of p, but depends only on the angle. So instead of being function of x absolute value of p and the angle theta in the p space, we uh, can choose a gauge in which the dependence on, uh, on, on p absolute value of p disappear. So that means that now we have a function phi, a uh, field phi, which is a function of x, and, and the angle only. So phi now is a function of x and the position on the Fermi surface. So that's how we uh, see a connection between the approach, our approach of coaching orbit with what people have been trying to do with bosonization. You have a bosonic field, one field at each point on the Fermi surface. Does this, does this limit the sorts of distortions? I mean, can you have you know sort of buds that overlap or anything like that? Is that consistent with this? Uh, I'm sorry, you you have large. I mean, suppose you. Uh -huh. I could imagine distorting the Fermi surface in such a way that along some angle there's more than one Fermi surface crossing. Like these. Yeah. Yeah. And. Yeah, I think uh, it's possible. Um, it's possible to, I think it's, it, it's always possible to get a, a, a finite a canonical transformation that, that go from a, uh, this shape to, to, to this shape. Yeah, it's the parameterization uh, probably is, um, so here uh, it's going to be beyond the, a small phi approximation that we are, we are using. Right. Yeah. I think the, um, as long as the topology of the Fermi surface doesn't change, there is, um, there, there should be a, 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 a canonical transformation that does the job. Mm -hmm. So from the perspective of the effective field theory, there is no cutoff on the curvature, is that? The effective field, so here we are um, dealing with uh, just a, uh, a formal uh, um, effective classical field theory. Um, I would believe this what come out only in the lower long, long wavelength approximation. So, so long long wavelength approximation here means uh, the Fermi surface the, the, the profile can vary slowly in space. Uh, yeah, right. yeah. This function phi should be a slowly varying function. That's right. But then, phi. do I understand correctly that um, at the fixed position x, the derivative with respect to theta is not? Um, yeah, it's not. Is it suppressed or it's not suppressed? The derivative with respect to theta. Yes. I assume it's a, it's a, it's a smooth function of theta, but. But there is no condition on the um, on the derivative with respect. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Thanks. Okay, so the action then can be written down in the following way. So I'm here and just giving you the um, the result. So uh, it can uh, the action that leads to the Landau Fermi theory consists of two parts. Uh, so there is a um, simple um, second part. This is just the, the Hamiltonian. 
this Hamiltonian is the energy of a fermionic system when we give it a Fermi surface. So for free fermion, for example, we just integrate the energy of each fermion inside this uh, Fermi surface over momentum and then integrate over space and you get the, hum you get the total energy. The first term is non-trivial. The first term is a, sort of a, a, a West Lumino Witten term, which in this case actually can be written without the, uh, the fictitious derivative, part, but one can also write it in a form of uh, integral over the ficti a fictitious uh, derivative. So here in this, in the first form, uh, the uh, 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 fictitious uh, coordinate, I'm sorry, S. Uh, in the first form, it, it, so here it's a scalar product of U minus one dTU. It's, it's only one time derivative. Uh, in the second form, it is an integral over a two dimensional surface of the so called Kirillov constant uh, surio symplectic form that is known from mathematics. Uh, the first term can be thought of as a berry phase sort of a very phase um, that, um, that a Fermi surface, a system of the Fermi surface acquires when the shape of the Fermi surface changes in time or in, in, both in space in, in time. So this, this very phase uh, turned out to be a universal feature of Landau's Fermi liquid theory. Basically what Landau's tell us is that this very there is a very phase, uh, a system with a Fermi surface, even with interaction, uh, has a very phase that, um, that doesn't depend on the interaction at all. It's kinematics. Uh, everything, uh, the dynamic properties of the system that depends on the interactions um, is contained in the Hamiltonian. Okay, so. Uh, a little bit about this Kirillov constant surio symplectic form. It is a, there is an important theorem in the theory of coarchion orbit that is on the space of coarchion orbit. In, on the coarchion orbit, there exists a symplectic form, a natural symplectic form. And the formal de uh, definition of this symplectic form is as follows. So if you take a coarchion orbit and have consider um, the, the vicinity of a given point F, then if we take two vectors, um, tangent vector, say delta F1, delta F2, uh, we can associate these two vector with a number. So this is how a, a, a two form would, uh, would work. And this number is just obtained by taking the covariant the, 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 the scalar product of the, um, of the commutator of the two element of the algebra that move f uh, to f plus delta f1, f to f plus delta f2. Remember that this coadjoint orbit is obtained by acting group elements on this, uh, on this f, on this f. And then a small uh, tangent vector can be thought of as the action of uh, algebra. And by we can construct a, a two form this way. And one can show that this uh, two form does not depend on how we choose this capital F1 and F2, and also that this two form is closed. So that is a rather non-trivial theorem. And the, um, the, it turned out, turn out that um, the very phase that we need to formulate the Landau's formula with theory is, um, uh, in terms of the action um, is just the integral of that um, of that uh, of that uh, symplectic form, the Kirillov symplectic form. Any question? Okay, so now we can try to. Now we have a very well defined, um, mathematically rigid formalism. Once the gauge is chosen, everything else follows. So for example, we can uh, ask what is the uh, uh, two-point function? 
So here I'm writing down here. I uh, what is written here is the result of expanding uh, the uh, effective action to quadratic order in phi in small phi. So we get this quadratic actions written here. And you see here uh, just uh, action which is uh, sum over the action of chiral well, of, of chiral boson, one chiral boson at each point on the Fermi surface, one chiral boson for each theta. And in this um, theory, one can also couple gauge field to it and determine what is the density and current operator. The density operator turned out to be uh, just the um, sum over the density of the chiral boson. Each chiral boson moves in the in, in, in single direction in momentum space, and the current current um, the density density uh, uh, correlation functions can be obtained in our theory uh, by a simple this uh, three diagrams. So phi phi uh, has a phi has a um, propagator. The density operator is just proportional to phi, and then we can read out the uh, Two point function of phi. This, um, in, this is in two plus one dimension. Uh, and the result coincides with the uh, uh, loop integration um, in, say, pre fermion theory. But we can also go to nonlinear response, the, uh, uh, the uh, coupling between the boson is completely fixed. One, we give the Hamiltonian. Uh, everything is fixed. So we can choose, for example, a Hamiltonian to be a Hamiltonian of, say, a free fermion and try to uh, check our uh, formulas. So by doing the mathematics, we, we get both the interaction, we get interaction from both the Weissman Witten term and the Hamiltonian term. So these, uh, Lagrange, these actions is slightly more complicated than the free Lagrangian. But the structure of the interaction term is again completely determined by, 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 the, by the mathematics of Poisson brackets. So here you can compute a three point function of, um, of three densities. So here's the diagram in um, the theory of fermion that gives rise to. Um, to, to, uh, to three point function row, row, row. In the bosonic uh, description, uh, we we get a set of diagram. They they uh, they fall into uh, the class of the star type of diagram where there is a interaction vertex between the bosons, and we also have the second type of diagram because our density also proportional to has a, a correction proportional to pi square. In the fermionic uh, ca calculation, it turns out that there is a cancellation between two fermion loops diagram uh, that basically are the diagram with where the fermion goes in two opposite directions. So these two diagram almost cancel almost exactly each other when the momenta of the external uh, legs goes to zero. If we take do the power counting naively in the fermionic theory, we get one over two. But in fact, the result is q to the zero power. And in the bosonic language, uh, the um, language of our effective field theory, this cancellation is natural. You get uh, um, automatic, each of these diagram automatically give us uh, the correct order, q to the zero. Moreover, we can also check that if we choose the Hamiltonian to be the Hamiltonian of the free fermion, we exactly um, uh, reproduce the result of the Feynman of the, um, the, uh, the uh, uh, free fermion uh, theory. And this is very non-trivial check. The uh, expression are on both sides are cumbersome and do not coincide with each other, but we can uh, check. Um, we, we have done uh, various uh, check that these two expressions uh, give us the same result. OK. So uh, in the last few minutes, let me uh, outline some possible extension of our formalism that uh, can be done. First, um, um, uh, we notice that the 
um, the, 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 um, the group of canonical transformations can be thought of as the, the group that the, the algebra of, of canonical tran uh, transformation uh, is, the, is the, um, a long distance limit of the algebra that are spanned by fermion, by fermionic bilinear, psi Decker psi. So this psi Decker psi operator form a closed algebra, which in the long wavelength limit becomes a uh, algebra of canonical transformation. So that means that we can uh, extend our formalism to spinful Fermi surface. We just need to extend our algebra to include also the operator of spin, which is sigma a, include also in, in addition to one uh, Pauli matrices. Uh, we can also um, extend our theory to deal with the uh, BCS uh, theory. Uh, we can extend our algebra to include also the anomalous, this um, psi psi and psi decker psi decker operator. Uh, the resulting algebra is a larger, the group that is larger than the group of uh, that the algebra of canonical transformation, but it's still a well defined algebra. And, and um, we are the next step for us would be to, um, to extend our theory to reproduce well known result of the BCS theory that we haven't done, but we think that can be done. So to conclude, um, the method of coercion orbit provides a natural way to write down an effective theory of a Fermi liquid. Uh, the mathematics of uh, coercion orbit uh, give rise naturally to um, procedure of nonlinear bosonization of the Fermi surface, which we have at each point on the Fermi surface, a bosonic field. Uh, this bosonic field is just the parameterization of the, um, of the point on the on, on coercion orbit. The formalism reproduces a linear and uh, very non-trivially non-linear Fermi liquid response, responses. And perhaps it is a suitable starting point for the study of non-Fermi liquid um, as well as more familiar uh, problems like the generics of, uh, of BCS theory. So thank you very, very much for your attention. Oh, let me also mention my collaborators, uh, Luca de la Cretas, uh, Isian Lu, and Uman Meta benefited a lot uh, from this collaboration. Thank you again. Let's thank. I'm sorry, the very nice talk. And uh, so I think we have plenty of time for questions. I, I have a question, Dan. Is the normalization of the Wessomino Witten term fixed in a natural way? Mathematically, it, 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 it somehow it isn't, but um, I think. Um, Quantum mechanically, it um, it should uh, it should be fixed. Um, um, this um, once we fix h bar, I think this the coefficient of this term um, has to be fixed. Um, what I know is that there is only one uh, the, the the coefficient has to be one in order to reproduce the. Um, the, the, the kinetic equation of Landau. Yeah, I'm just wondering, could, could there be like a set of deformed Fermi liquids that this theory produces where you change the coefficient of that? I mean, is that, does this setup produce a, a more general set of, I don't know, effective field theories of which the Fermi liquid is one? Um, so, if you choose this Fermi liquid, but this parameter to be not one, then I think uh, the volume of the Fermi, um, Fermi sphere is equal to that coefficient times the number of particles. So the, um, the, uh -huh. relay, the, the Lattinger theorem will have a coefficient. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, 
I'm not sure, not sure what actually that means. Yeah, it's, uh, it's the, the classical theory is consistent, um, completely consistent. It, maybe even the quantum theory is also consistent. Imagine that uh, this number, well, maybe this number has to be uh, an odd number. I'm not. I'm not completely sure if. Uh -huh. uh, yeah, if, if one can uh, can rule out this uh, situation, or how to put constraint on this condition. Okay. Th thank yeah, you. There's probably some global aspect of this. Um, yeah, that, that would be interesting if the global aspect caused some quantization or something. Yeah, that causes a quantization. All right, thank, thank you. Yeah. Steve? Uh, yeah, could you just uh, remind us how this compares with the older, the Fratkin, the Castroneto uh, bosonization? They, they seem to have the same variable. Yeah. So, um, so um, my, the, um, uh, the 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 quadratic action uh, that we get is the same. So, um, so this 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 quadratic action actually is quite natural, um, and um, almost everybody. Uh, Get it, mm -hmm. but but then the question one can ask the following question: How can one write down the next correction? Is there any way one can fix the um, Q, FIQ? Next uh, correction um, means higher powers of phi. Phi, yeah, higher power of phi. Yeah. So higher power of phi is uh, come out very naturally in our uh, formalism. We can just um, think about the Hamiltonian. So the Hamiltonian is just some function that depends on the shape of the Fermi surface. For free fermion here, I'm just write down what is it for a free fermion, but I can also uh, do it for Fermi liquid. So this 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 is not no one has seen before. Is to think that the, the expression for the corrections mm -hmm. by by cube correction and in principle other by is something that um, has not been obtained before. And are, are these, but they do seem to be, you know, higher number of derivatives. So if I were looking at this and, you know, had conventional field theories in mind, I would say that they were irrelevant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so depending on, um, so again, um, uh, the, we are using the word relevance or irrelevant, um, uh, influenced by by Wilson, who, right? Uh, I, I I understand. I was yeah. So the the, the question is the fault. So one can get ask various questions. For example, one can ask uh, if I want to um, determine nonlinear response. So uh, response of uh, to sec to, to quadratic order of the density on the electric field, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, what do I need to know? And the answer is that we need to know all this uh, by cube term um, in order to, so in the fermionic theory, we compute this diagram, but in the bosonic theory, this would, we would need to, to get this, uh, this cubic term. So this, this is one. Um, another place where this might be important is um, in, 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 in the possible application is not again, non fermi liquid. So when, when people um, try to look at the behavior of certain loop graph in non fermi liquid theory, they draw these kind of diagrams. So for example, one of the diagrams that give rise to probably possibly correction to Z in non fermi liquid theory is, is the diagram of this type. And in, Estimating this diagram, one need to know how, what is the behavior of this vertex, the effective vertex of, of these four, um, four bosons. 
and uh, and and our theory give rise to a natural uh, behavior of this vertex. Why one do say one try to write down a general interaction term involving phi? One doesn't know how many derivatives one needs to put. Yeah. There. So so sorry. Here you're you're imagining tuning close to a quantum critical point to some broken symmetry phase. Uh, actually, I'm thinking more about uh, Fermi surface coupled to a gauge field. Oh, okay. Like a happy land down there. Uh -huh. okay, but um, a, a, a quantum critical point would also be um, similar. Um, except there, um, there is always a nagging question of superconducting instability. Well, presumably, you could take a Fermi surface that isn't symmetric. Yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. I think uh, we had another question from Wenchin. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, uh, hi, Dr. I have uh, maybe a few questions. Uh, first is this, uh, I think, uh, the, have you compared this uh, your theory to the one-dimensional nonlinear uh, linear liquid theory, uh, where they they actually uh, proceeded by I think re, uh, first do the uh, refermentation, and uh, then capture the the energetic uh, nonlinear arity. I think it would be corresponding to the terms that you have is like the second uh, in your SH, mm -hmm. like the 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 epsilon prime double prime turns mm -hmm. uh, and also uh, another uh, thing is that the from microscopic point of view that uh, bosonization is uh, is possible is based on that you can organize the reorganize the Hilbert space in terms of bosonic like a particle hole uh, pairs mm -hmm. and but uh, when the when the Fermi surface curvature comes in, uh, I think that is not always uh, exact to, because of the uh, asymmetry uh, caused by the uh, either the, the, the energetic uh, nonlinearity or the curvature nonlinearity. I think in both cases, uh, they would, uh, uh, you cannot just uh, organize the, reorganize the Hilbert space completely in terms of the both uh, particle pairs. You have to, there, there have to be uh, some, some kind of uh, fermionic like uh, degree of freedom, and uh, I, I would uh, do you. Do, is that not included in your construction, or, or do you think it, it can be? Uh, it's already in the in your current uh, formula uh, for uh, for for, for uh, formalism. Thank you. Yeah. So yeah. So um, uh, to your first question, we have compared the formalism with um, with just um, usual linear. Um, uh, bosonization in one plus one dimension. So it's rather trivial check of that uh, uh, fermions uh, give rise to correct uh, linear terms, or quadratic term in the uh, in one plus one dimension. We haven't compared our uh, result with a nonlinear uh, term in the bosonized description. So I think it should work um, in one plus one dimension. Your second question, uh, the, the, uh, the, the question of the curvature of the Fermi surface has always been uh, uh, in the past, uh, one, of the, uh, uh, one of the difficulties in, the, in bosonizing Fermi surface. And here, I think we have solved this problem. This, um, non this uh, bosonization procedure based on the, uh, Coaching orbit uh, simply doesn't care about um, about uh, the curvature of the Fermi surface. The formula that we obtained uh, correctly reproduces the um, the, the uh, result of the microscopic or calculation of kinetic theory um, with curved Fermi Fermi surface.
Okay, I think Mike Mike Mulligan had a question. Hi, son. Um, so, what? So there's an issue with um, trying to get uh, single particle operators. Um, and I was just wondering about the, at least in the 1D comparison, if it, it somehow works out in that case. We don't have a single particle excitation in our formalism at least uh, yet. Mm. Um, so in one, yeah, we don't have, um, we don't have, uh, you know, um, uh, um, uh, formally, we, we, our formalism is completely bosonic. But one thing one can, one may, um, one thing I, I'm thinking about uh, trying to do is to include this um, single particle operator by hand in the algebra. So instead of an algebra that contains only bifermion operator, there are also psi, psi decker. These are fewer operators. Uh, we would get a graded the algebra and I wonder if the uh, co-join or weak method would give us anything. Uh, but in this uh, in this method, there is no connection. In this approach, there is no connection between the bosonic operator and the fermionic operator, in contrast to what we would expect uh, in one plus one dimension. So I'm I'm not sure how what is the um, fermionic operator in this um, approach, and even whether we should expect them. At this moment, when we are thinking about um, reproduce, when we are trying to reproduce um, correlation function of bosonic operators like density, we simply don't need the uh, fermionic operators. Mm -hmm. All right, thanks. When we try to ask question, for example, what is uh, Arpes experiment? So I also had a question. Um, in in doing kind of Wilsonian RG of this effective theory, what what fields would be integrated out as um, at a given energy scale? Say. So here, the situation is the following. So we think that we have been able to. Uh, identify the correct degrees of freedom of, uh, of a system with a Fermi surface. So these are these pi operator, that pi that is a function of x and the position on the Fermi surface. So we claim that these are the correct degrees of freedom. We understand uh, the western mean of Witten term, uh, which is pretty rigid. That's it, we um, have the we then have to follow the um, Weinberg's um, philosophy and try to think about what are the allowed low energy effective field theory on this field. Um, it might be not necessary to think which degrees of freedom have been integrated out. Uh, in fact, for example, if we um, go back to the chiral perturbation theory in QCD, uh, we just write down the theory of the pions, which we know are the correct degrees of freedom. These are the Boston bosons. Uh, we don't have to think which degrees of freedom quark and gluons have been integrated out. Actually, it's impossible to start from QCD and integrate out quark and gluons to get uh, theory of pions. So here I think the, 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 the productive point of view would be to take these as the degrees of freedom and try to work with it, work with them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you. Maybe another related question is if, um, let's say you want to describe a, a transition in which the topology of the Fermi surface changes, mm -hmm. would that be describable in this method or do you need something else? Because presumably the reference, if not, would be different. Yes, the reference F0 would be different. I think somehow the degrees of freedom here, so it's when the Fermi, say Fermi surface pinches off, uh, it's possible that um, there's some degrees of freedom at the pinching point 
have to be taken into account explicitly. So that's something that I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure actually if the uh, co orbit method is um, is um, sufficient uh, there, or we have to to supplement it with some something in addition. Uh, that's I, I I don't have a good um, answer to your question. Ah, I see. Thanks. Yeah. I have a very naive question. So when you described the Landau's approach, there was this function capital F of two momenta, P and P prime. Yeah. Where is that in your effective action? Just. Uh... This is the, um, this is in the Hamiltonian. So uh -huh. suppose I'm, yeah. So the Hamiltonian is a function of, of the shape of the Fermi surface. Basically that. That is the uh, where the uh, Fermi the Fermi parameter the the Landau parameter so give us how the so the in, in Landau theory we can write down the total energy of the system it's integral of f zero times uh, f of p and then plus this function f p, p prime delta n p f p delta f p prime is a factor of one half. So that's the Landau parameter up here in the Hamiltonian. And okay, and when you write epsilon primes in the next slide in the expanded out action, mm -hmm. that's not epsilon zero. That's the epsilon with this correction from the Landau parameters. Uh, no, we are doing no. here actually uh, just a free theory to for simplicity. Oh, oh, in I principle, see. yeah, we can um, do it also with Landau parameter. The formulas would be. Um, more uh, cumbersome, but um, but I have I no doubt that the result will be the same. Okay, I see. And just one other question is a natural setup where the little f will not just be zero and one is at non-zero temperature? Uh, will be non-zero temperature, yes. So uh, do you, I guess, do you just have some results for that or is the, uh, the action would be similar just with a different f zero or? We, yeah, yeah, actually, I'm not sure um, the, um, the, uh, the, the, um, so in the, um, I'm not sure, I'm not, yeah, this is something that we haven't thought about, the, 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 in bar, so in the Coachon orbit, there is a, it's a coset of G over the group that leaves the reference state invariant, so yeah. the reference state at finite temperature uh, has a much smaller uh, subgroup that keep it invariant. Right, right. We need more field than just one field mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. parameterize. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Is the difference just in the sub the subgroup that fixes uh, the reference state? Yes. I mean, uh -huh. Because I find a temperature, I, I guess I have more processes that will make it these uh, infinite conserved quantities that talk to each other. Uh, yeah, in other words, the following, um, it, when, when I have a zero temperature, um, the, um, the, 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 the system can be described completely by the shape of the Fermi surface. But when the Fermi surface is fuzzy, then also we have to know how, in which way that fuzziness is. Like what is a lot, say for example, local temperature would be now mm -hmm. uh, uh, a parameter. And presumably more. So I have more degrees of freedom. Um, and can I view as like having a lower seam? Like, can I say it is, um, you know, Enhanced scattering due to finite temp small temperature uh, induces some kind of relaxation terms um, at, at the level of the effective field the effective dynamics uh, in some way. Um, I'm not completely sure. It's the clearly um, this effective action will not be um, will not exist uh, if we talk about just effective action on a single contour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finite temperature. Mm -hmm. 
more yeah, finite temperature. Fermi liquids at finite temperatures is, um, is presumably, presumably more complicated than what we, we described here. And I don't have an answer. I don't have answer to the question. But I think this maybe this non 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 this um uh, this um, curvature in orbit at least would 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 would, would, would suggest to it what are the degrees of freedom. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess yeah, it resembles a bit this uh, story of uh, that we discussed previously about of uh, Levitov um, and collaborators, yeah. right? Where you have these uh, infinite hours of uh, harmonics. And uh, um, half of these harmonics have a relaxation term. That's the kind of relaxation I was having in mind because of this uh, enhanced uh, scattering. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, like you say, it suggested that there is a free, in, in, at least as far as the temperature is sufficiently small compared to EF, one should presumably have the same degrees of freedom. It's just that we need to understand how to include uh, the relaxation terms and whether that is any useful in the form of an action, maybe a two contour action or something. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thanks. Any more questions? Okay, if not, let's thank Son again. Thank you very much. <laughs>